I had an old boat that was missing a bolt plug. I looked online to get a new one. It was about $14 plus $20 shipping. Not worth it. So, of course, because I like to make things, I made a new one. Here's how I did it. So with every project with composite mold, it starts off with melting the composite mold. I had about 20 ounces worth of composite mold that I melted in the microwave for about a minute and 10. And then I poured it over my sailboat boat plug. I wanted the threads facing upwards in my mold so that I'd have a better chance of getting the details out of that when I happened. I used a plate with a little bit of size on it for the mold box so that it would cover it but I didn't need it a whole bunch and it just fit it really easily and it was easy to do. I put, after it solidified, it took about 15 minutes in the refrigerator to solidify, I pulled it out of that mold box, the plate, and then I cleaned up the edges a little bit here just by peeling it off. And this that I'm peeling off, remember it's composite mold so it can be remelted and reused. I am now putting in a couple little slots onto that mold so that when I have the plug that goes on top of this, the other half of the mold, they will line up correctly and so I'm putting in three little notches into the composite mold so that they'll line up. Several parts of this boat plug makes this a very complicated and very very challenging product to mold. The reason why is you have the threads in the plug which you want to have work afterwards and also it's a very thin part so you need to have a very thin boundary. We're doing that by using combination of the composite mold and the impressive putty. We could have used just one or the other but I used both and the impressive putty will provide a firm internal plug so that when we put it in there it'll it'll line up correctly. And so I'm pushing in the putty into the into the plug, the back side of the plug, and I'm also putting it into the little spots that I made in the composite mold so that when I take it off and I put it back on they'll line up correctly. The impressive putty is also a remeltable reusable mold make material just like the composite mold. The difference is the impressive putty is a putty form that you just press over your part like we're doing here whereas the composite mold is a pourable material so they both have their advantages and you use it in different different situations. This impressive putty took about an hour to cool to the point where we could pull it off the mold. It's now relatively firm and it creates a really nice indentation for the back side of this composite mold, impressive putty mold. I'm now going to take the plug out of the composite mold. I left it in there while we put the indentation of the impressive putty in there so that it would be in the exact location of where it would be in the mold so we had a good round shape for the plug when we make the duplicate and you can see that I picked up all the details of the threads really nicely which was great. I want to show the whole process so I'm going to play some music as this is going on just so you have something to listen to as we're pulling out the plug. What's awesome about the composite mold and impressive putty is you can experiment really without any worries. Whenever you need to you just remelt it, make it again. What you don't see in this video is I actually first tried this plug facing the opposite way and I said no I didn't like that so I remelted it and made the made the mold again. So now I'm sticking the mold on top of some paper just so that when I pour in the resin into it I don't make a mess over the table. So I'm just using some newspaper on the bottom. I'm using ComposiCast white resin for the casting of this plug. ComposiCast is a two-part epoxy resin that you mix, mix A and B, there we go, A and B together, one-to-one uh, -to -one mixture. You want to mix the B into the A because the B is the hardener. If you have too little hardener, it'll still work just as well, but if you have too much of the hardener, then it has more of a chance of it not setting up the way you want it to be. The composite cast has quite a range, so you can do plus or minus probably about 15% and have it work very well still. Mix this very thoroughly. Alright, this gets a little boring, so oh, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Here we go. Speed up.
Okay, so now we're ready to actually pour the composite gas into the composite mold. What I did with the composite mold beforehand here is I made sure it was on a very flat surface and that the circle of the plug was actually round. And I did that by using the impressive putty plug to make sure that everything was lined up correctly. Now the composite cast has about a 45 minute uh, time to use it. So you have plenty of time here to put it into place. And I'm using the paintbrush to actually paint into the threads so that I know that it's all covered and there's not gonna be any bubbles from the casting material and I have a really nice solid finish and the threads will work as they're supposed to. I'm pouring a little bit more resin in here but I don't really know how much will actually fill it because I don't really know how, what the thickness of it is. So what I'm going to do with the plug is I'm going to push it into the mold the way it's supposed to be. And this is pushing the resin up and around into the spots where it is. And I'm going to look at the back side of this plug and I'm going to see where it's filled and not filled. So I, you can see that some of the spots didn't have that actually resin on the putty. So I know it wasn't filled so I need more in it. So I'm painting on a little bit more just in case. Now I'm going to put the plug back in. See how it wasn't actually covering those areas with the resin? So I knew that I need more. So now I'm going to push it back on and see if I still need more. Okay, see how that's still dry there? So I'm going to pour a little bit more resin in. Okay, now when I push down, you can see it coming over the edges a little bit. Yeah, I know. I, now I know I have enough. So I push that right in there to make sure it fits solidly and everything is lined up correctly and gave it a day to cure. The resin is now solidified after it sat overnight and now I'm pulling the impressive putty off and we're going to see our first view of our plug. The back side looks very nice. A little bit of edging that we'll need to clean up but that's not a problem and that was expected. The composite mold and the impressive putty and the composite cast did a great job of picking up all the details of this plug, just cleaning up the edges here, and we will try it in the sailboat. Using my nice handy tools here to clean up the edges a little bit, take off any of the extra plastic. And I think we're going to speed it up again to make this go a little bit faster. So now here's the big test 
whether or not it'll actually screw into the sailboat. And it does very nicely. Oh yeah. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate this. And this is only one example of what you can do with a composite mold and an impressive putty. And remember, what makes this really special is you can then remelt it just by putting it back in the microwave and you can do something else. So this is a tool that you can have around the house or around the shop to use it whenever you want. For more information, visit CompositeMold.com and we also have a free ebook available if you go to the CompositeMoldStore.com slash learn. Please subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions just leave them below and we'll do our best to answer. Thank you so much. Have a great day.